Hello, I'm Mark Rice of Cutter Networks, and I'm going to talk with you briefly today about a carrier Ethernet demarcation device. So then specifically, we're going to talk about the ETX204A. But first, let's just talk about the concept of what is an Ethernet demarcation device for carriers, and what does it do, why do they need it? Well, as you know, more and more things today are connected by Ethernet. And carriers deliver higher and higher bandwidths and have all kinds of deals and uh, for charging on the, those services. And for example, let's take a, a, an instance where a carrier has a gigabit fiber link coming to a building. And in that building, he may have four customers for the sake of conversation. Now, one customer wants 500 megs all the time, and he's willing to pay for that. And he also would like the ability to occasionally be able to burst above that if the bandwidth is available on the link. But he figures as long as he's got 500 megs, he's okay. Customer number two, for the sake of conversation, is, uh, wants 100 megs. And he wants to be guaranteed that he's going to get his 100 megs. He doesn't care whether it ever bursts above that or not. He just figures he's got 100 megs, he's all right. Customer three wants 75 megs. Oh, and by the way, the last customer wanted that on a fiber connection. Uh, customer three wants 75 megs, but he wants this on a copper connection, and he doesn't care about bursting either. Customer four needs a copper connection, but plans on moving to fiber. He operates at night. His business is predominantly at night. He figures as long as he has a minimum of 25 megs, and with the ability to burst above that if the bandwidth is available, he kind of guesses that the bandwidth in many cases will be available. Well, how do you do all that? I mean, that sounds like quite a combination of things. And the answer is you have to have a carrier demarcation device, an Ethernet demarcation device of some type. Now, the RAD ETX204 would fit that bill very nicely. It's able to do all those things and a lot more. Let's take it one step further, though. What else does the carrier need? So the carrier needs to divide those services up to be able to allocate different bandwidths, to be able to prioritize traffic. And beyond that, what does he need? Well, he needs to be able to check it. He needs to be able to do such things as loop back. He needs to be able so that if somebody calls him and says, my link is not working, he needs to know that the problem's not on his side. So he wants to be able to do a, a loop back all the way to the customer premise. So how does he do that? Well, once again, if he had that ETX204 there, he'd be able to do that. You know, he doesn't want to have to roll trucks to see if there's a problem. He wants to be able to do that remotely. He also might want to do other things. He, he wants to get ongoing, proactive information so that if there's a problem, if he sees that the link is becoming saturated, he wants to know that in advance of any customer ever calling him. How does he do that? Well, the answer is he gets statistics, all kinds of st information about the bandwidth that's passing through that link. Um, a lot of them, you, and you're going to hear all kinds of terms, and in a few minutes we'll look at some of the specific terms that apply to the ETX204. But the idea is always the same. Basically, a, a carrier Ethernet demarcation device is designed to allow that carrier to control the traffic, separate the traffic, rate limit the traffic, prioritize the traffic, and be able to test his network to make sure that it's doing everything it's supposed to do. Because they have service level agreements that they've made with these various customers guaranteeing this amount of throughput, and they have to be able to assure that that is in fact happening. Here we have an ETX204A. On the front of the unit we have a test alarm LED, a power LED, a 9-pin serial connection, which is used to initially give it an IP address. Thereafter, most of your management and etc. will be done through the Ethernet management port. Now, one of the nice things about this unit is that for every port on it, you have it, they're combo ports. So you have both a copper port and an SFP port. Uh, they are 100-1000, which gives you a, a lot of flexibility there. This combination right here is for your network connection. The second one can be used for either a network connection or for, as a user port. And then you have the four that are used for user ports. When I say four, they're four combos, of course. If we look a little further to the right of the unit, we'll see the AC power supplies. And if we look at the side of the unit, uh, there are two fans for reliability there. There are no other ports on this box. Uh, it does come with rack mount ears so that you can mount it into a standard 19-inch rack. 
ETX204A is MEF certified and it supports EPL, Ethernet Private Line, as well as EVPL, Ethernet Virtual Private Line. Additionally, there's a Sync E option, which is used for extreme instances where you need extremely accurate clock. For example, if you're trying to backhaul cellular data, uh, clocking is extremely important. The ETX204A handles that very well. The ETX204A offers several flexible mapping uh, choices. You can do it on a VLAN plus VLAN priority basis. You can do it VLAN plus uh, DSCP. You can do it uh, VLAN plus IP precedence. You can do it VLAN plus ether type. You can do it via uh, destination or source IP or MAC address. So you've got a lot of options there. The QoS basically has three aspects. You have rate limitation, traffic shaping, and prior traffic prioritization. And it has a, a long list of features, as we've, we've mentioned some of them, but the list goes on. This product was really designed from the ground up with the carrier in mind. It won't solve every problem because the carrier's problems are many. They have lots of challenges in front of them as they try to deploy Ethernet quickly and economically. And the ATX204A won't solve all of them. However, it does have quite a tool set to help with many of them. If you'd like to discuss your particular application, I hope that you'll give us a call here at Cutter Networks. Since 2001, we've been helping customers find solutions, and we would love the opportunity to work with you. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.